Hi, welcome to Your Excel Nerd. I'm going to show you how to pull a list of uniques from a list with duplicate values, like in our column A. So in column A, we have lots of names, and the names are duplicated. So we have Jason, John, Jason, 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 etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we want to do is we want to pull the first value that is unique with one function over here. To show you how that looks, I'm going to copy this Luke. I'm going to go all the way up before Jason and I'm going to paste it and I want you to see what happens to this unique value row. So it's just Jason Luke and if I add a name like Matt or Joe or Eric and then I add Eric again you'll see that our list of uniques gets placed right here. And the list of uniques actually just pulls in order in which the name appeared. So because Jason came first, Jason will pop up first, and then Luke second, Matt third, and so on and so forth. Okay, anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And the first thing we need to do is use a match function. Uh, a match function essentially finds a value within a range of values, returns the placement of that value it was looking for within that range. So if you have a series of 1 to 10 and you're looking for the value 3, it would return 3 because it says, hey, I found 3 in this incremental series of numbers. So that's for numbers, but we're actually going to look up names. And rather than looking up one value in match, we're going to look up multiple values. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, I'm going to go equals match. Uh, and I, I, I can put MAT tab, and it actually just Excel figures out what I want. My lookup value is going to be this whole range. So this is going to be a match array. Rather than looking up one value within an array, we're going to look up an array within an array. I'm going to highlight that A2 cell, Control Shift down, F4 to lock the range. So as I drag it, it stays the same. My lookup array is going to be cells C1 through C1. I'm going to make one of those C1s an absolute reference and the other one a relative reference. So as I drag it down, that range is going to get larger and larger and larger, and it's going to look at all the cells before it. So it's going to say, hey, if you find one of your values within the values before, don't include it. So my match type is going to be zero in this case. I'm going to hit, this is an array formula because we have put a range of cells where usually this function accepts one value, so I'm going to hit Control Shift Enter. Let's highlight this, hit Calculate Now, and NA basically means that none of these values exist with, within any of these cells. So just to show you, I'm actually going to go ahead and type in Andrew into this unique cell, and let's see what happened to this little array formula. So if we highlight this formula and go to our Formulas tab and press Calculate Now, See, we're having all of these NAs until at this cell 15, it finds one. It goes, oh, we got, it's in the first cell. And then it finds the next one in the first cell and then in the first cell again. And then again over here, there's a couple more Andrews down here. I'm going to X out of that. I'm going to change this back to uniques. Excel has this great function called isNA. And what isNA does is it returns NA, which means not available errors, into trues and falses. So if it's an NA, it's a true. So if I hit this and go calculate now, now I have all trues because it can't find any of these cells within this cell. What can we do with those trues? Our goal is finding NA cells, right? Because we want, we want to find cells that are not matched in the cells above it because we're finding unique cells. We're not finding duplicates. If we were finding duplicates, our goal would be to find the opposite of NA. The great thing about trues and falses is you can actually do mathematical operations off those numbers. So what I can do is I can go negative, negative, open parentheses, close parentheses. I'm going to just take this cell, take that formula and go calculate now. Oh, and it gives me a series of ones. So I've just converted trues to ones with that little negative negative. Negative negative just makes Excel aware that we're doing a mathematical operation. It doesn't actually make any changes because a negative times a negative is a positive. So it doesn't make any changes. So if we were, you know, a positive times a positive is a positive and a positive times a negative is a negative. So it actually won't convert a true to a false and it won't convert a false to a true.
we need to find the first cell that is not duplicated in this list. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to, well, I'm first, this, the problem with this range is that we have duplicates, right? We have nothing but ones. So what we can do is use our row function. And row usually accepts a reference. So if you look at this um, formula hint, uh, it takes one reference, but because we're already doing an array and we're going to be hitting Control Shift Enter anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that same A2 through A28 array in there. And so what that's going to do is uh, it's going to subtract that cell, that cell's row number, from the match number. So if I highlight this, I'm going to get a lot of negatives. Go calculate now. Um, that's not really going to help us either because those negatives are going to totally distort the match. So I'm going to go Control Z. And I'm going to go ahead and just divide this by uh, 10,000. And all of a sudden, I have a reasonable numbers to work with. So because we subtracted the row number and we're trying to find this JSON, um, the first unique value within the names, I need to find the largest of the numbers because JSON was only subtracted by row 2 over 1,000, whereas all the other ones were subtracted by higher numbers. So I'm going to have to find the max because it has the least amount of subtraction based on the row. So I'm going to go max, tab, and my number is going to be here. And what that does is it converts this array into one value. So I go calculate now. And it goes, well, your biggest one's 0.998. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Because all of these do not exist here in the cell before it, so if we say is an ANO on those, that means um, they're all true. So they're all valued at 1 when we did that double negative math operation on it. However, we wanted to make them unique from one another, so we subtracted the row over 10,000. So this value is 1 minus row 2 over 10,000, which is 0 0.9998. And I know that's kind of a long-winded explanation of what we did, but that's essentially putting Excel into English. All right, so we found the max value in there. So what do we need to do? Well, we sh should probably match that cell, right? So I can go MAT tab. I'm going to match this max within an array. And we've already made the array. So I'm going to grab it right there. I'm going to paste it right there. And our match type is going to be 0. I'm going to close that off. Control Shift Enter. And it's going to give me 1. OK, great. That works. It's the first cell within that, within that index. So now we're going to use index. Go F2 to the edit mode. Index tab. Our index is going to be this array. Go F4 on that, comma. Our match, which is, makes up our row number. So our match pulls in that 1, which is JSON. Close that off. Control Shift Enter. Gives me JSON. Brilliant. I can drag this down. And that's interesting. OK, so it gave us our unique IDs until it hit Luke, which is our last one. Then it went to Jason and just brought in a bunch. Well, why did it do that? Actually, let's look at it, the array from here. You can go calculate now. And you'll notice that we're in the negatives because all of a sudden, Excel couldn't find any unique values. So there were no NAs, so they were all falses. That being said, the falses, we did that mathematical operation. It converted them to 0. We're going 0 minus the row, which is always going to be JSON, right? Because JSON always sits in row 2. So we match that, and it's always going to return JSON, because as we drag it down, we're only going to get smaller numbers, and we're doing a max operation on that. So that's sort of a long-winded way to explain that as well. So how do we make up for this? Well, we can use an if function. Um, and this is when the formula becomes kind of long. So I'm going to go I tab if cells C1 through C1 equals this index. And I'm going to make one of these a absolute reference and one of them relative reference. I'm going to use an or operator around it. 
if we highlight that, it's going to give me a true or false. And I'm going to close off that or. The value if true is going to be null. And the value if false is copy this index all the way to here. Paste that. I'm going to put Control Shift Enter. And I'm going to drag that down. Oh, and it worked. Great. So what the OR did was it converted this value. If I go into Calculate Now, it's going to give me a series of falses and a true. And because it found that one true, it's going to give me this null value. So it says, hey, I did find that name in here before. I found JSON A. So because I did that, it's going to be null. And Control Shift Enter. And there you go. That's how you do it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com or leave a comment below. Thanks again.